welcome. Big River Steel is officially open for business. Thank you all for coming. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. I'm gonna run all of us through a, a brief slide presentation, taking us through the history of Big River Steel, how we got to where we are today, and as importantly, where, where we're going in the future. Big River Steel is the newest and most technologically advanced scrap recycling production facility in the world. We began construction in July of 2014, and our first lines went operational 19 months after groundbreaking, world record time for the startup of certain uh, uh, steel mill lines. We've invested $1.3 billion in property, plant, and equipment here. This is the largest investment in the state of Arkansas's history. We're a global company. Here in this audience today, we have people from all corners of the globe. I saw someone this morning that had just flown in and arrived last night at midnight from Moscow. Yesterday I had a meeting with 30 individuals that had all flown in from Germany. We have people from Brazil, China, Finland, France, the, the list goes on. We truly are a, a global company. And it, I am very, very proud to have such a global presence in the Mississippi Delta, Northeast Arkansas, the city of Osceola. In attendance today, we have a number of dignitaries and government officials, starting with our governor, Asa Hutchinson. We have representatives from Washington. We have the local county officials, uh, Judge Carney, Mayor Dick Dickie Kennymore, representatives from the congressional districts, the Senate districts, Dave Wallace, Monty Hodges, the list goes, goes on and on. We also have former uh, Florida Governor Jeb Bush in attendance today. So for all of those who have taken time out of your busy schedules, thank you very much for helping us celebrate the Big River Steel grand opening today. We've had a number of achievements to date. Uh, we are the state's first and only Amendment 82 project. Several years ago, the citizens of Arkansas voted to change the Arkansas Constitution to allow the state to be more aggressive in supporting economic development projects. Because of that distinction as the state's first and only Amendment 82 project, all of us at Big River Steel wake up every day with the reminder that we have to be very, very good stewards of the capital that the state provided us to build this mill. We also are the first steel mill in the world to be invited to be a member of the Center for Collision and Safety Analysis. If some of you have watched on the evening news where you see the two cars crashing into each other and they say, okay, that damage is $3,212, that's the group that now we're associated with. We're sitting at the table with the likes of Ford, General Motors, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes, helping them design their next generation of cars using the next generation of steels. So it's quite an honor for a young company like Big River Steel to be invited to be a member of that organization. And you're gonna hear some sirens in the background. We are an operating facility. You know, we're, we're running today, we're producing steel for our customers, so I apologize in advance for some of the uh, operational noise that you hear. We set a world record in the month of January for the number of tons produced by a steel mill in its first full month of operation, something that we're very, very proud of. I've been doing these transactions for 20 years, and what the guys and gals at Big River Steel were able to accomplish in January is, is second to none. The safety record at Big River Steel, very, very, very key metric to judge how we're doing. If you look, our safety record in lost day incident rate is 0.11. The average of industrial construction projects, as calculated by the uh, United States government, is 2.8. We also took the time and effort to become the world's first steel production facility to be LEED certified. Now, what does LEED certification mean? That's an independent third-party designation that says we are leaders in energy and environmental design. 
Now, why is that important? Many of the world's automakers are looking more and more to focus on sustainability, sourcing from suppliers that are good stewards of the environment. And as I tell people, and as I told our board and investors, if our steel selling for $1,200 a ton delivered to General Motors, and U.S. Steel, steel is selling for $1,200 a ton delivered to General Motors, and we have LEED certification and U.S. Steel doesn't, we win the tie. And I'll take that tiebreaker. So again, I think that going forward, we've set the bar. You'll see other companies try and follow in our, in our footsteps. The ownership, how did we get here? Somebody asked me just the other day, Dave, how did Big River Steel get started? So if you allow me just a, 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 a few seconds here, the project started when Charles and David Koch had one of their representatives call John Kareni, our former chairman and CEO. And the message was, John, we at Koch are interested in finding out more about the steel industry and maybe becoming involved in it. John, of course, quickly set up a meeting. Uh, we met with the representatives of the Koch team. They quickly found that this was to their liking. It was capital intensive, cyclical, but the group with modern, efficient technology is going to win the day. So Koch, Koch is a 40% owner of the company. We also have TPG Capital, one of the head partners at TPG. Mike Stone uh, was involved in one of my first steel mill projects 20 years ago, a company called Steel Dynamics up in Butler, Indiana. TPG Capital is the 10th largest private equity firm in, in, in the world. We couldn't be more pleased with them. ATRS, the Arkansas Teachers Retirement System, they own a 20% stake in our company. I will tell you, as I go around the state of Arkansas and speak to different audiences, I always ask for a show of hands. Are any of, your, are any of you teachers? Do any of you have neighbors who are relatives are teachers? And all times, hands go up in the audience. So ATRS owns 20%. By connection, any teacher or retired teacher from the state of Arkansas also owns a small piece of Big River Steel. Global Principal Partners, that's uh, my, my firm. We, uh, we invest in the transactions that we ask other people to put money in. Uh, we're happy to be a 20% owner in Big River Steel, along with International Steel Associates, which is the investment entity that John Kareni and the Kareni family hold their ownership stake in, in Big River Steel. In addition to the equity providers, we have a global syndicate of banks led by KFW. I first did a transaction with KFW 20 years ago, and I have done probably a dozen or so transactions with KFW. They're a large German bank. Right below KFW is Eula Hermes. Euler Hermes is the organization that manages the German government guarantee program. A large portion of our debt is guaranteed by the German government. Why did they do that? Well, we bought over $600 million of equipment from Germany, and the German government saw fit to give us that support. That's a world-class group of, uh, of lenders. It does include, as you'll see on the bottom, the Arkansas Department of Finance Authority. They provided us with a $50 million loan for 20 years at the state's cost of capital. We also have a, a group of other financing providers, working capital providers, grant providers, the city of Osceola, Mississippi County, Arkansas, the Ross Perot organization uh, has some involvement in this company. Uh, again, a who's who in the financial community. Why did all these financial organizations come together to support Big River Steel? Well, two, two, two real product niches. The first is, the energy projects, what are called electrical steels. Anytime energy is generated, transmitted, or consumed, electrical steels come into play. The key is, for energy efficiency in this country, we all continue to do the right thing, turn our lights off when we go, go to bed at night, turn our temperature so we're not wasting energy. But the real key is to get the kilowatts that are generated at the power plant into the wall sockets at your home, or into the industrial motors at the plants. The best way to do that is to replace the outdated transformers that line our electrical grid system. 
There's a reason that a very large, smart company from Japan named Mitsubishi is building a brand new, large transformer plant 40 miles away from here. They see what we see. Electrical steels are going to be hugely in demand in the future. We also have what's called advanced high-strength steels. If you're an automaker, you have conflicting, conflicting demands. On the one hand, the federal government is telling you you need to be safer, safer, safer. The best way to be safe is to have thick, heavy steels. Put a cage around the driver and the passengers. But on the other hand, the government's saying you have to have fuel efficiency. What's the best way for fuel efficiency? Lightweight, thin steels. Those two don't go together. We've developed, along with some Japanese steel producers and European steel producers, the next generation of advanced high-strength steels, which are steels that are both lightweight yet strong. Hence, as I mentioned previously, our involvement with the Center for Collision and Safety. This mill is designed to not only make today's advanced high-strength steels, but more importantly, the next generations of advanced high-strength steels. We're going to be announcing, uh, in conjunction with the state of Arkansas, and the Arkansas State University, the location of our automotive research facility right here in the state of Arkansas later this year. Most of our competitors, they put their automotive research facilities up in Michigan. No. Arkansas has been very, very, very good to Big River Steel, and it's the least we can do to put our automotive research facility in, in the state. My goal working with the governor, working with the other state officials, is to hope to win the next automotive stamping plant competition. With us and our advanced high-strength steels, with our competitor Nucor up the road, making investments to get more and more into uh, automotive steels, with our research center here, I think that Arkansas has a, uh, certainly a, a fair chance to, to win that next sweepstakes. Why did Arkansas want us? Well, you can see up here on the screen, already, and we're only 27 months into our life, we've, ha we've had companies announce a total of $300 million of investment with 300 jobs. That's not Big River investment. That's not Big River jobs. That's people satellite. I tell people these mills are like an aircraft carrier. We're the aircraft carrier, and then we have all the support ships and all the supply ships that surround us. That's what you're seeing on that bullet point there. And we expect many more to locate here. They also were attracted to us because of our 435 jobs that are going to pay an average of $75,000 a year. In this part of the Mississippi Delta, those are good paying jobs. And quite frankly, that's the guarantee we've given the state that will pay those workers $75,000 a year. Based on historical precedent, I, I, I wouldn't be too far off, but I would say, on average, our workers will be making north of $90,000 a year. We also created over, over 2,000 construction jobs and spent over $300 million with Arkansas-based companies. We're also spending $10 million in training. But one of the things that, that's most telling to me, I asked uh, a gentleman where I fill up my, where I fill up my uh, SUV with, with gas the other day, I say, hey, I see everybody coming in here to buy pizzas and sodas. You know, how many pizza slices did you sell the year before we got here? And he said, Mr. Stickler, I don't know. I'll get you the number and email it to you. Well, I just got it on my way to the plant site this morning. The year before we got here, they sold 2,000 slices of pizza. Last year, they sold almost 9,000 slices of pizza. So that tells you the economic input. That's a small sole proprietor that benefited directly. He also gave me one other tagline. His sales the year before we got here were 900,000. Last year, they were $3.1 million. That's one fueling station. So we're very, very proud. Why we wanted Arkansas? Well, we wanted Arkansas for a number of reasons. But rather than me standing up here and telling you why we wanted Arkansas, I'd like us to hear from our, our, our former chairman, John Kerenny, who passed away midway through the construction. 
John was a partner of mine for, for 15 years, and I think once you watch this video clip, you'll understand why all of us in this room decided to come together, invest $1.3 billion of capital, and locate here in Northeast Arkansas. So if you could cue the video, please. Well, I have been in the steel business for more years than I'd like to remember, but probably a little over 40 years. I enjoy doing these, these type of projects, uh, especially in rural America. Uh, I was born and raised in a small town, half the size of where we're sitting today at, in Osceola, Arkansas, a little town outside of Rochester called Mount Morse. So all of my career, I've just done diametrically opposite of what big corporations have done. I've put these multi, this case billion dollar plants in rural areas where the laborers are and where we can get hard working farm people. And believe me, I say this with all honesty and admiration, the farm work ethic in the United States of America is second to none. I've seen steel mills all over the world. American farm boys will outwork them, outthink them, outproduce them time and time again if you follow the premise, and that is you give them the right tools and equipment, you treat them with dignity and respect, and you keep management and the hierarchy out of their way. Join me in a round of applause for, for John Crenny. And, and, and let, let, me, let me pause here for, for just a moment. And uh, uh, John's uh, wife Dawn is here. John's mother, 99-year-old Sarah Kareni is, is here. John's sister is here. And 25 to 30 members of the Kareni family. Could I have, ask all of you to stand up for a round of applause, please? Thank you, thank you. And I know many of you traveled great distances to be here, and it's quite an honor for me to see so many of you here in, in, in the audience. As I said, John was a, a friend of mine, a partner of mine for 15 years. We traveled all over the world together, uh, the far reaches all the way to, to Russia, to China, Japan, most recently, we, we were uh, looking at doing something in, in, in Iceland. So again, from Dave Stickler to the Kareni family, thank you so much for allowing me to have the opportunity to work with, with, with John. At Big River Steel, this is not a one-man show. When John and I first uh, put this project together, we said, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to use a business model that has worked very, very successfully in a number of leading companies across the globe, including several that I had worked at on, on Wall Street. And we have a, a nine-person operating committee, and those are the men and women who really get things done. And I'll just say a few words about each of them. Adam Beasley, Adam runs our melt shop. Adam started his career as a deep sea diver repairing barges in uh, Berkeley, South Carolina for, for Nucor. He found out how much you could make working at one of these aggressive uh, flat rolled mini mills, applied for a job and you know uh, uh, he's, everything's been success for Adam. I worked with Adam on a project that John Kareni and I did down in Mississippi a few years ago. We have George Gurley. George Gurley is one of those farm boys and farm girls that John was just talking about. George is right from here. Uh, this is his hometown area. George started his career at Newport Hickman. We then snagged him and had him down in uh, our Mississippi project. And when George found out that we were building a plant up, up where he had grown up, he quickly rose his hand, and boy, were we glad that he did. Art later, Art later started his career in the integrated steel community with Bethlehem Steel uh, up, in, up in Maryland. We had Art down in our Columbus, Mississippi project. When we completed this mill, Art decided to come up and join us. Jim Bell, Jim Bell, who's uh, related to uh, John Karenia's second cousins, I first met Jim when he was a contractor for one of the construction firms. Jim then saw, well, wait a minute. 
I can keep moving around and around the country following all these jobs, or I can try and get a job with the steel mill, stay home, maybe have a little bit more, more stable life. Jim uh, is in charge of our construction uh, operations here at Big River Steel. Uh, with John's passing, we also asked Jim to join our board of directors, so Jim was kind enough to accept that. Jim was involved with us down in Columbus as well. Dennis Hennessy. Dennis started his career in the Canadian steel industry. Dennis is responsible. Remember I was telling you about those advanced high-strength steels? Dennis is the guy working with Jody Shaw that's responsible to look out the next three, four, five, six years, what are the automotive community gonna, gonna need? Ari Levy, Ari Levy's been my partner at Global Principal Partners, which is our investment entity, for 15 years. Uh, we've done transactions all over the world, from Iceland to Thailand to China. Mark Bula, who you met, uh, and I'm not so sure, Mark, if that was you riding in on the motorcycle or not. I, I didn't know, I'm not one sure if you can ride a motorcycle, but if it was, you look good on it. Mark and I have worked together for 10 years. Mark, uh, Mark does a bang up job with, with our sales. Mark has been all over the country and parts of the world selling our steel already. Tommy, again, you saw the farm boys and farm girls. Tommy's a farmer right in this, right in this area. In fact, in the early days, Tommy came to me and said, Dave, can I take a few days off? I go, why? He goes, we're harvesting our crops. So, you know, there you go, that, that farm boy mentality. Lenore, Lenore Trommel, I worked with Lenore when we were working on a, pro, a steel mill project up in uh, Detroit, Michigan. We convinced uh, Lenore and her husband to move down from Detroit to Osceola. Uh, so we're glad to have Lenore. Lenore serves as our, our chief compliance officer. Those are the, the guys and gals who work with, uh, work with me every day to make sure that we continue to have all the achievements that, that we've had. Here's a couple of highlights during construction. I won't go through all of them, but my goodness, 1,400 miles of cable. That's enough to get all the way to Las Vegas. Look at the first one. We could have ran a sidewalk all the way to New York City with the concrete that, that we poured. The, uh, I guess the biggest challenge that we had a lot of people say, Dave, boy, you're so lucky to be right on the Mississippi River. I say we're so lucky to be on the Mississippi River when we're operating, when we're building, challenge after challenge after challenge, including having to lower the water table 56 feet at times. That just shows you some of the challenges we had. Thank goodness for Jim and his team and their expertise to allow us to continue to maneuver and continue to to be able to build when we had record high waters there. We self-manage these construction projects. In other words, there's no big turnkey contractor, something that John Crenny pioneered 25 years ago out in Utah when he was working with Nucor. But these contractors, if you will, who work right alongside of us in managing the entire project, they're the ones who really make it happen. And for all of those companies up on the screen there, and I know you've all got representatives here, thank you very much. I know we, we, we pushed you, we pushed you, and then we pushed you some more to meet our aggressive timeline, but thank you again. Our technology suppliers. For those of you who know the steel industry, this is a who's who. SMS Group and uh, Damon Burkhart, their CEO is in the audience today, flew in from uh, Germany yesterday. They're a company that has its origins back in the 1830s in Germany. They're one of the largest privately held industrial companies in, in all of Europe. SMS is our lead technology provider. Prime Metals. Prime Metals provided us probably one of the finest substations uh, ever built with a, with, a, uh, with a steel mill. Rusala out of Spain. They provided our water treatment facility. ABB out of Switzerland. Tanova out of Italy, and then Morgan Crane and Ace Crane. When you go on your tours, you'll see some big overhead cranes uh, uh, in, in the melt shop area. Those are Morgan. Elsewhere in the mill, including here, those are Ace Cranes. We have a number of on-site service providers. These are the companies that are surrounding the aircraft carrier. These are the ones who've announced $300 million of investment, the 300 jobs. We have H2G, 
They're our compressed air. Mid-River terminals, that's our port facility operator. Arkansas Recycling, they, they help process our scrap metal. TMS, they do our slag processing. Air Products, that's our oxygen plant operator. We have Steel Warehouse. Hats off to Steel Warehouse. When we were still just a, a pipe dream, John and I went and called on the Larriman family and said, Dave, Larriman, and the rest of your family, we're thinking about building another steel mill. If we do, would you be interested in putting a slitting line on site? Without hesitation, Dave and the rest of the Larriman family said, look, we've done that with you guys elsewhere. We've done it before. Yes, we want to do it. Just give us the best spot. Well, I think they've got the best spot. Their facility's already up and, up and running. Technology. We really are a technology company. We have automation throughout the mill. We will produce 1.65 million tons of steel with, four, with 435 workers. That's close to 4,000 tons of steel produced annually per worker. I will tell you, best in class. Best in class. Not because we're the best, but because the technology is so advanced today, the technology that SMS and all those other providers, it allows us to run this mill very efficiently. When I first started my career in the steel industry, the steel industry was 80% brawn, 20% brains. Today here at Big River Steel, we're 90% brains, 10% brawn. It's just, again, the evolution of the technology. At our core, we act and think like a technology company. We have, we're going to be working with a company called Noodle Inc. Noodle Inc. is artificial intelligence. Just like you see those autonomous driving cars that go around and, you know, film, they're learning. The more they drive, the more they learn. Big River Steel, the more we operate, the more this mill will learn. This mill ultimately will become the world's first smart mill, which means if we have a production flaw somewhere in the operation, by the time that slab or that coil gets further processed downstream, the mill will automatically know how to correct it. Instead, we have to stop, we have to look at a, a, a playbook, we have to dial everything in. Ultimately, we will, the mill will, will, will correct itself. Environmental focus. We are being good stewards of not only the state's cost of capital, but of the environment as well. We believe that we will become the world's most efficient steel producer in terms of energy consumption. Our mill, because of that German government guarantee I told you about, we not only had to meet US EPA standards, we had to meet European environmental standards. And for the most part, European environmental standards are more restrictive than they are in, in the U.S. Again, people ask us, Dave, does the world really need another steel mill? And the answer is no. But the world does need a steel mill that's willing to push the boundaries of what steel can do.